Hello. Hi, Lynn. This is Cliff from The Bullets, phoning in to do the interview for the Lynn Amsterdam Show. Oh, hey, Cliff. How are you, how are you doing? Doing fine. How are you doing? I want to thank you very much for uh, being right on schedule. Well, it's only good manners to show up on time, buddy. Now, Cliff uh, leads a very charmed life. He's living in uh, sunny California. He's got a real hot wife, and he's in a hot band. Do your days get any better than that? Lynn, if I told you they got any better than this, you'd think I was lying to you. Can you tell me uh, who is in the Bullets? The Bullets primarily consist of myself and my songwriting partner Dave McConnell, uh, and we've been hanging out in the clubs and the bars and the backyard barbecue now for uh, a little over 30 years. Now, Cliff, I've been to your website and you're listing yourself as country. I, I feel the Bullets are a whole lot more. We're listed as a country band, Lynn, uh, but that's mostly due to default uh, because it's a most generic genre to put our music in. Uh, we're really more of an R&B type, uh, Buddy Holly type band. Do some pure country, but we don't do a lot of it because Dave really doesn't like to hear me yodel. Can you blame him? There seems to be a big uh, 60s influence on your music. Now, do you have a personal favorite uh, band from that era that you feel has influenced the bullets? Well, my personal favorite uh, from that era, the British Invasion era, has always been the zombies. Tell her no, time of the season, she's not there. I think they're probably one of the most underrated bands uh, that ever was. While they were overshadowed by the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, they, they were tighter, better melodies, more jazzy, bluesy type band, and uh, their uh, album Odyssey and Oracle uh, is, is actually better than Pet Sounds or uh, Sgt. Peppers or some of the others that, uh, that really get the acclaim. But some of the others that, that were our favorites, you know, uh, bands like Chad and Jeremy and uh, the Dave Clark Five and Gary and the Pacemakers and uh, just, just about any British invasion uh, band that came out. Um, and then in the latter stages, uh, really like music by guys like Gary Puckett and the Union Gap all the way to Bobby Darin to Jim Croce. So while there's a lot of British invasion influence, uh, we try to throw a little bit of everything into what we do. Cliff, I understand you had a chance to meet one of your musical heroes, Rod Argent of Zombies fame. I've actually had a chance to meet uh, Rod Argent and uh, uh, Colin Blundstone uh, several times, and uh, their lead guitarist, Keith Airy, is, is a fairly good friend of mine. We've, uh, we've had many a drink together. One of the stories that uh, Rod told me uh, not too long ago was that uh, his song, Tell Her No, which is my personal favorite song of all time, is in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the word no in it uh, more often than any other song. So inspired by this, I wrote a song called A Fine Pair, which recently peaked at the uh, number one in the country pop charts. And I, and I chose the word baby to just see how many times I could mention the word baby in a song and uh, kind of give it a, a 60s type flavor. And it was kind of my, my uh, challenge uh, and my uh, tribute back to the, uh, to the 60s sound. Now I understand some of your history includes a stint as a disc jockey. Yeah, Lynn, uh, when I was trying to uh, get through college, uh, one of the, the things that I did, I was a disc jockey at a local uh, radio station. During that time, uh, I remember the program director came in. This was right after the hustle was really big in uh, like 75 and 76. And he says, I've got this new record. It's, uh, they're calling it disco. So we gave it a listen. And I told him, I says, this stuff is never going to fly. And he said, are you kidding, man? This is going to be the biggest stuff since Elvis. Uh, and it turned out to be uh, pretty big. I don't know if it ever was uh, bigger than Elvis, but uh, it helps explain why I'm not a disc jockey. One of the reasons I wanted to try to give uh, jockeying a, a try was because back when we were in high school, Dave and I, uh, uh, by a uh, series of uh, uh, hit and miss, uh, happened to become acquainted uh, with uh, the Wolfman, Wolfman Jack. And we used to be able to call the station and identify who we were, and they would put us through while he was on the air. And uh, uh, had several times that we spent quite a while uh, funning with him, uh, uh, on his radio show. He was uh, quite a nice man and then uh, a couple of years later he was cast in American Graffiti and became more well known and uh, uh, ended up uh, clap for the Wolfman. That's a reference to the Guess Who's hit record Clap for the Wolfman. There is a guest rap by Wolfman Jack himself. 
Cliff, can you tell me about the songwriting process for the Bullets? Songwriting for us, Lana, or especially speaking for myself anyway, is really uh, more of an inspiration than it is a process. Um, I found that uh, I get sparked by phrases, by things people do, or, or actually by a feeling that comes out that I want to try to describe. And I've found that most every song that I've written, which is, is now around 50, uh, 50, 55 songs, generally are written in a couple of hours because once once it hits, once the spark is there, it generally flows pretty easy. Do you have a uh, hands-on when it comes to the production of your recordings? Well, yes, Lynn. We're not are we involved. We are the production end of our recordings. Uh, it's, it's very basic. Uh, recording is done up into uh, uh, an MR8 multi-track recorder. Uh, through a Behringer mixer for the vocals with SM58 mics. Even the drums are done in the worst possible way, which is just open air with one and maybe two mics. Th this is shocking. Um, then we, uh, I, I try to master it as good as I can directly from the MR8 uh, onto the Cakewalk program sometimes and uh, uh, then straight up onto the, uh, the MP3 site. So what do you think of the uh, Internet and uh, specifically how... The internet is now a tool for the indie musician. Well, this indie internet thing is is a great thing. It gives people like us a chance to uh, put their music out there uh, for public consumption, uh, uh, and it's a great thing because it puts control of the music in the uh, in the uh, the band and the listener. The listener can hear what they want, and the the band can put it out there. Uh, whether or not you want to give them uh, an MP3 download or not uh, is up to you. And uh, who knows, uh, while it's um, uh, not probable, it's always possible, uh, it may fall on an ear someday that uh, somebody wants to pick up, uh, pick up your music and promote it. You got a favorite guitar? Yeah, I do, Lynn. I've got uh, actually two favorite guitars. I have a, uh, a Washburn Cumberland, which has a, uh, uh, a vine inlay in the fretboard with uh, pearl, pearl inlay. Uh, I also have a, a, a 1972 Ash Fender Stratocaster. Played a lot of guitars over the years, but there just isn't anything better than a Strat. Can you share uh, some uh, gig experiences uh, with us, uh, good and bad? We opened a mall one time uh, in the mid-70s, and uh, they asked us to play out near this fountain in the middle of this, this enclosed mall, and this was, this was new back then. So here we are, just a couple of young guys playing, and uh, uh, that actually led to another gig where we played a uh, fireman's uh, graduation ball. And um, just as we set up and uh, got ready to play, the PA system failed. So. Uh, we took our uh, guitars and stools and went down into the middle of the crowd of uh, about 300 people and uh, played for them for a couple hours till the, the party was over. And uh, but we're enjoying the music so so much. They actually asked us to come out in the parking lot and play for them uh, some more. So we did for uh, about another 45 minutes, sitting on top of a car. So do you like doggies? <laughs> Quickly, Lynn. My dog never leaves my side. When we go to sleep at night. Uh, there are two heads on the pillow, mine and my wife's. When we wake up in the morning, there are three, mine, my wife's, and my dog. So when my wife opens her eyes, I'll always pick up th the dog's paw and kind of point it in her direction and say, Hey, do you like doggies? Well, that's a wrap. I'd like to thank Cliff Hitchcock from The Bullets for dropping in. The Bullets are on the top of my playlist and should be on yours too. Len Amsterdam Show, broadcasting from Canada, heard worldwide. Hey there, you looking for a good time? You want thrills, chills, and unparalleled excitement? Well, sorry about that, folks. All you're going to get is us. The Bullet Band welcomes you to the Bullet's Desert Cafe, a place where anything can happen, a place where anything usually does. Check your guns at the door and join us at the bar for a drink, a laugh, and a listen. The Bullets are proud to be part of the Lynn Amsterdam Show. As always, broadcasting from Canada.
Hey, you like doggies?